So let me just try <clears throat> sketch out. Uh, so this is going to be a, somewhat of a repeated uh, critique. I repeat a lot of uh, ideological critique, I guess. But um, I have described the negative feedback loop, and I'm going to do that again, I guess. But it, so you have the the social justice movement, uh, let's just say, project, and you know what what it's kind of uh, what it advocates for, and what has been pandered to by policymakers is. Um, Let's call it in a liberal project of a kind of destructive integration. And when that destructive integration sort of leaves in its wake the exact uh, ideological, uh, it generates the same ideological complaint, which, you know, is in the same kind of resentment and the same, and exactly the attitude, it, it, it kind of promotes the attitudes which it was supposedly designed to alleviate, you know, and not to mention it being practically a kind of catastrophic failure, you know, that it kind of, it creates this very artificial um, pseudo-transformation, which then when, when, uh, when people aren't willing to kind of um, feel the right way about it and kind of... Uh, um, see it through the right ideological filter in order to kind of dress it with integrity when it is uh, a patently undeserving of, of kind of, um, you know, uh, you know it, it, it requires a kind of pervasive mind control in order to kind of get away with what it's doing, um, it, which is essentially making everything worse. You know, it's kind of lowering standards in the most kind of racist way and then wanting to define everyone who sees through it as racist, instead of, you know, actually coming up with practical solutions, which would have more to do with the practical uh, um, problem and, and how, you know, how to deal with it in reality, rather than how to deal with it in terms of historical injustice, which really has no relevance in terms of actually doing better for people in the present and improving people's lives that you know, the fastest way possible and the most effective way possible. And in fact, when this illiberal um, project fails, then it gives tyrants and demagogues the excuse to double down and to create more centralized, tyrannical, um, you know, or, or it also creates a cultural orthodoxy, which is a tyrant's dream, you know, and, and so you can sort of justify any sort of mismanagement and it's all covered over because it all gets laid at the doorstep of the uh, the the scapegoat identity, you know, uh, which is, uh, you know, which uh, they get to brand as as the uh, as the instigator because they were the instigator in history and therefore they are labelled historically privileged. And you can never get away from that cheap conflation of confusing and posing that false dilemma onto the present and saying, well, everyone keeps in these stable categories. Everyone keeps in, in these factionalized groups and you must be the historically privileged. And the project is to dismantle and, and deconstruct your privilege, never mind understanding anything about reality or practical concern and constraints you know it, it's all about vindicating cultural separate but equalness you know it, it has this kind of disgusting racialist edge to it that needs to get its sadistic revenge uh, uh to, to kind of bring equilibrium uh to the to the identity matrix and, you know, that ideological project is uh, essentially only capable of being administered by a tyrant, by some kind of demagogue. And obviously, the, you know, their, their particular ideological goals, you, you could say, I mean, obviously, they're compatible with fascism. They're the exact same underlying philosophy, for example, that the Nazis used. Um, but they always have to compromise those values because they're impossible to achieve because it's impossible to have 
a state filled with ethnically different people when you regard those people according to the social justice framework as being essentially different because they have different cultures or different ethnicities they essentially have different truths about them you know it's so uh, racialistly uh, uh, infused with this um, and and you can in a sense um, there's no practical way to to, to fix this uh, uh, problem because essentially you, you've created um, an animal zoo as it were you, you and so you can't you know and, and this is why you get people who who will um, talk about people being like lions and and you know trying to actually make people think about people in terms of being different animals you know that's one of the fascistic tricks and so that then is the all the more reason why you have to have them separated you have to put up borders you have to have one ethnicity per nation state you know it's the only stable compromise and so eventually you get these ideological principles more and more becoming the useful idiots of the fascists of laying down the the, the socialize uh, you know the, the kind of the the cultural propaganda and and advocating and pushing for destabilizing liberal values until the only stable way to to orchestrate society along the terms of social justice is oh well we all just have to have uh, ethno states uh, and and you know you know we just need to separate ourselves it becomes the only real solution because you know i mean although in principle uh, they can, and they can still believe this when they don't have any political power because it's, it's easy propaganda for people to latch onto that it is possible to have a rainbow hitler it's possible to have some kind of authoritarian bully that's going to perfectly mediate between the different groups and there'll be a way to orchestrate some perfect equality of outcome you know with some kind of quota system or some kind of compensatory redistribution that happens you know, which, I mean, on some level could only happen uh, in 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 the vision of a kind of state socialism. But as soon as you start organizing something like that, people realize just how, how you know, dehumanizing it is. So then, you know, there's the kind of fascistic compromise. Well, let's try keep the free market. We'll just uh, only have a society with one ethnicity in it or only one culture in it. Or we'll just subjugate all the different ones and and this is essentially what um roughly what what the what the apartheid philosophy can be easily reduced to um and you know this is exactly the same philosophical premises that social justice runs off of um you know it, it, it's racialist uh garbage um and you know so it, it's easy to to sell people uh the deceptive ideological formula that if we can just uh, uh, get justice for our identity and scrape together our, our racialist pride, that at the uh, accomplishment of that feat, uh, there'll be you know basically paradise uh, at the same time. And you know those those uh, objects, the, the, those uh, goals, are completely. You know, they have they bear no relation to one another. The one is a is a zero sum ideological game of of racialist pride, and even if you do equalize all the racialist pride in the system, I mean it's it's a, uh, I mean yes, you can equalize damage. You can make everyone poor. The lowest common denominator, famously, is that everyone will be dead. You know, um, you can bring everyone down to the lowest common denominator. You're not going to create any kind of uh, uh, greater access to wealth just because you've um, spread out the hurt from history and equalized the... Uh, I mean, that, that's what it boils down to, an obsession and fixation with revenge. And the conflation that if you continue with that revenge project and complete it, that at the same time you'll wake up in some kind of paradise... Um, or, you know, there won't be any more problems after that. Uh, we just need to, you know, maybe what we'll have to do is just make sure that no one ever wakes up and, and sort of uh, uh, starts thinking like the colonizer or, or something like that. You know, you, it, it, it always, uh, I mean, that's also the other indirect 
um, product of this ideological project is that the only way that you can define progress is by not being like the evil identity. And so you can make an ideological manifesto of everything that needs to be uh, stripped from social uh, uh, constructs and, and removed from people's thinking. But that doesn't actually change reality in any tangible way. I mean, it, it's. Uh, I mean, it, it really amounts to to a kind of um, hyper realism, you know. And and so, you know, even if you accomplish that laundry list of ideological bullshit, you know, which includes having no one ever uh, criticize your ideology. I mean, you know, this kind of that will go at the top of the list of of you know thinking like a colonizer or whatever you know the the enemy identity is. And, you know, like, if anyone by definition is not going along with this project, they've got internalized colonization or some other bullshit, you know. So it, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, this is essentially exactly what borderline personality disorder, how it operates, how it's always the victim. And it, it uses this kind of stark victim perpetrator analysis um, uh, to, to basically trump any other kind of common sense realism or, or any kind of thinking uh, uh, apart, any other thinking that gets out of that narrative, which is locked into that it must be the thing that we face, that must be the thing that must be the thing that everyone attends to. So, I mean, obviously, if you can force everyone to convert to to this kind of pseudo racist religion, you know, you can obviously you can force some kind of uh, coherent uh, um, mob mentality that, that, you know, can kind of protect itself uh, ideologically by ignoring everyone that, that doesn't, um, uh, you know, you know and, and you can kind of get people to be violent in the name of this cause. Um, you can do all those things. And, you know, when, when things don't actually start looking better then you just double down that it's because the evil identities are, you know, conspiring against uh, uh, your, your project, which can only fail because the enemy is not being radically defeated, you know. And, and so you've got a kind of aggra self-aggravating um, thing that can never be wrong, uh, you know, in, in that sense. And, uh, yeah, obviously this is very... Um, well, you know, watching any nation or political establishment uh, uh, fall under the grip of this kind of tyrannical, um, disgusting, uh, uh, you know, spiraling into an abyss, just because, essentially, you can use uh, historical claims as the symbol for what needs to happen in the present. And so you can already strip the present of any kind of true creativity or synthesis because history can only be conceived of as black and white, good and evil. You can know that history is the knowledge of good and evil. And if you have that as a complete narrative, then you've got your solution to answer any problem in the present. So because you've got this complete, absolute moral knowledge over the past, and this is why the past can't be seen in any nuanced or sophisticated way. You, you know, it must just be good guys and bad guys. You know, like, there can be no mixed facts. And I would argue that the present is always a mixed fact, because you can't argue with what has happened. And to talk about moral blame about the past, and to to use that to overlook what is potentially the best route in the present. That, in a sense, is the greatest injustice that is possible, because you are essentially offending against pragmatism in favor of some kind of surreal narrative. And it, the more you play that surrealist narrative to try and retrieve something from the past, because it is impossible to do so, and because you will always fail, you'll have to explain your failure with doubling down. Because why can't we make life better by trying to revise and erase injustice from history? But, I mean, so the injustice that exists in the present, can don't conflate that with the injustice of the past. And, I mean, as I said before, this is a tyrant's... Uh, uh, wet dream, because he can do whatever the fuck he wants... 
he can get away with it. Because he's got this convenient excuse button. History. And so when does responsibility start? When does accountability begin? Oh, only after the point at which there's some kind of radical equilibrium. So, so we can just put that on the back burner, you know. So we don't have to work out a treatment plan that would actually be the most effective. We don't have to think in those sorts of practical terms because then the victim would actually have to be the one who has to uh, uh, adapt and become more than what they are. And if they would have to culturally appropriate some knowledge that doesn't already belong to them, that would be like some kind of really perverse uh, uh, a universe that would force the victim to actually have to do some inner work, you know, like, no, they can't do anything that they, they must just be uh, allowed to have free reign. And they can be as 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 uh, incompetent and and inefficient as they like, and they can just continue to mount that as an ideological challenge for what they are yet owed. So when you've got this kind of pressure valve release, which is, uh, you know, basically, it, it, it's the, the best tool that any kind of deceptive, corrupt leader can use, because you've got a mindless mob who will uh, be acting in defense of their culture or their group. And you can justify anything under that banner. You can do anything under that banner, and it'll never be wrong. You won't be the person who did it wrong. You won't be the person who was irresponsible. And in fact, you're encouraged not to be responsible, especially if that responsibility looks something like what's called uh, colonial uh, sympathizing with the colonizers. You know, or you know, if you do anything that, that, that exists outside of your cultural sphere, you know, so... The, the whole cultural appropriation thing, I mean, is, is a vastly kind of Nazi philosophy concept, you know, that, that you are not allowed uh, to venture outside of your group. You're not allowed to negotiate culture on the level of the individual. Uh, you, you, you have no hand in choosing and adapting your own culture or, or widening it or broadening it. No, you must be defined by your factional demagogue. You, you must belong and march with your group. And if you don't support your group, your group's vision of itself and its insular, uh, uh, essentialist power, power paradigm, then you, you have been um, weaponized by the evil other, by the evil identity that you, that you, they have stolen you from your group. I mean, it's incredibly dehumanizing. I mean, it essentially turns people into uh, packs of dogs. That is what this ideology does. And what is even more perverse is that it, it, do, it does that, uh, it excuses itself for doing that by saying, no, this is the only response we have because they are, are projecting it onto us, so we have to do it to defend ourselves. We have to do it to ourselves to defend ourselves from them. So it's funny that the fascists will always complain that they are fighting against fascists. So in... I mean, this can, I'll illustrate it like this. I mean, if you understand anything about, like, the Nazi uh, uh, ideology in history, you can understand that they were basically complaining that the Jewish uh, uh, conspiracy was a fascist conspiracy uh, uh, to destroy them. And so they had to be fascist to kind of, just to protect themselves from the Jewish fascism, essentially. That's kind of what it all boils down to. And so as soon as you are sucked into that ideological bullshit, I mean, essentially, you know, you, you can never outthink it. You can never uh, extricate yourself from it. You know, it has you. you. Now you have to run with your pack. You have to uh, um, belong to that kind of dog mentality and you have to represent your breed. You know, it, it's it's so disgusting and dehumanizing. Um Yeah, and so we, we've got social justice. Um, spreading the kind of the, the ideological foundations uh, that is basically setting up 
the, the cultural edifice. I mean, this is the same thing that happened to Nazi Germany. You, you understand that they were, uh, they got into the culture first. They got, you know, even the, the communists, uh, to a large extent, were marching with the fascists in the Nuremberg rallies, which were apolitical rallies. So they weren't fascist rallies per se. They were fascists in them, and there were lots of Marxists there as well, destabilizing the state, saying, give us justice to our identity. Our identity deserves justice. And that whole rhetoric can only be delivered by some kind of authoritarian tyrant that's going to say, I, let me deliver justice to your identity. Let me take history into my own hands. You as an electorate will not be responsible and accountable for policy. You, you, know, you will be infantilized. You, you will just be a child of the state. That, that is what is effectively being offered. And you know, essentially, because the state uh, uh, that runs like this is, is essentially a stupid state, you know, it makes people pathetic, it, it makes people unintelligent, you know, it kind of, it, it really rips uh, uh, the, the whole fabric of accountability and responsibility. It, it changes everything, you know, it, it changes uh, uh, gender relations, you know, it, 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 it has... Um, really quite perverse uh, uh, you know it, it, it changes people into a different kind of people and I still think culturally the, the Germans uh, suffer uh, from this still to this day it hasn't come out of their culture yet um, and and primarily I would say that this falls into the kind of the, the socialist tradition which is still quite big in, in Germany they, they still languish w with this kind of we need the we need to be saved from the system you know they they still haven't uh, found their way back to classical marxism that has its its liberalism intact um yeah that's somewhat a tangent but um And I would say this is all because uh, government didn't choose policy to um, to focus on access. It did not promote access to economic um, and and other forms of uplif uh, upliftment. It did not make access tangible. Um, it just wanted to hand things out and be the good guy government that was responsible for redistributing things and giving things out instead of making a sustainable process of access which would be the foundation of a new uh, a ground up uh, system of commerce and industry which would work on a small scale you know that, that would kind of be grown from the bottom and because there was no way to you know like some kind of uh labor for housing you know that you, you work out a system where you uh get some form of uh government list or, or some such thing where you can get higher on the list by providing labor as well and then you end up building other people's houses that are lower on the list and there's some kind of um you know some kind of commercial interface so that it's integrated enough that it actually sets up an industry that's viable and that people are capable of negotiating uh, on, you know, and so you've actually got some legs at the bottom of the economy that actually bring people into it, that there's actually an interface, that it's not just the government handing things out, which is unsustainable and which doesn't sort of, and so we haven't invested in things which can be scalable and, and self-sustaining after they are set up, you know, we're not investing in things that keep on going, we're investing in things that, effen uh, that effectively make it impossible for the private sector to ever take up people, you know, so, I mean, the private sector to a very large extent has been, uh, I would even say, from a policy perspective, sabotaged in, in, in a very, um, uh, uh, in a very obvious way, you know, it, it's kind of, it's almost by design, the private sector has been sabotaged. 
to look bad, to be the pansy for the good guy government against the bad private sector. You know, and so then you have this kind of illiberal feedback loop, which justifies greater centralization and greater mismanagement and, you know, like, and things looking even worse, which then you can justify a second round, oh, well, we need to be more radical. And all the while, the concept of cultivating responsibility and giving people the access and the capability, the access to the capability of being responsible, that is completely left out because people must be infantilized by the state. That is the the, the, the kind of the vision. And then you can also, it's more easy to sell people liberation every election. As you say, no, no, liberation is coming. We're going to hand out money. We're going to hand out grants. That's what the fascists do. That we're just going to give people money instead of giving people a role within the, the system. And instead they're going to blame the private sector for not offering those roles to people when they're already cutting off what would be viable markets because instead of giving out things they could actually create a bridge between the private sector and people who need access to being productive essentially and also not just being productive but being skilled in education which has been a, I mean there was actually a scandal with the ANC government uh, knowingly essentially did not deliver textbooks textbooks which existed which were supposed to go to schools they were in the storerooms and they just weren't delivered to the schools as a as an intentional way to keep a kind of rural voting base locked into you know some kind of ignorant poverty so that they can just count on their votes and promise them liberation election after election And this whole idea that, oh, it's because the private sector isn't willing to give up its capital or some kind of crazy logic that, oh, no, it's because capitalism isn't willing to, to offer itself into some kind of uh, a perfect socialist vessel f for people. You know, when there has never been an attempt uh, on in terms of government to actually make small business and skills incubation, you know, like... Uh, uh, to ever promote those things. In fact, they have legitimately made it almost impossible for small companies to succeed because everyone that they give skills to immediately gets headhunted after they become valuable tokens because as soon as they have a bit of experience, they become valuable tokens. And so there's a toxic labor market which is created by this ideological perversion of, of a kind of illiberal, destructive integration and when destructive integration ends up creating so much resentment, it has to be doubled down by ideologically reinvesting into this toxic sewer of, 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 um, of a kind of policy nightmare, which uh, is really just laying the groundwork for pandering more into the fascist conception of how society needs to be run. And, you know, the only people who ever do well in that case are some few elites, you know, uh, who will, who will, I guess, be living it up as, as figureheads for their racialist collective, you know, they will be like the Fidel Castro living in the Great Castle or something like that. all under the, the banner of this identity politics stuff, which, which is effectively the, the best diversion a tyrant can ever hope for. You know, keep people divided and squabbling, and you don't have to care about policy. In fact, if any of, of people talk about policy mismanagement, they will be attacked f for being, um, uh, uh, you know, wanting to promote capitalism or, or some such bullshit, you know, I mean, this is a fascist's, uh, well, th this is already a fascist culture. I mean, already, if, if you bring up these points, you essentially get threatened. I mean, uh, you know, with a kind of veiled, you know, like violence is coming for you, you know, you're going to be the target of some kind of uh, r r radical 
revenge which is which you deserve because you're standing up for the wrong identity you know you're forced to 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 to, to be branded by your identity you know uh if there ever was a mark of the beast <laughs> it is a social currency now in this social justice movement paradigm <laughs> 